to raise awareness and combat some of the biggest challenges our world is facing right now with the environment. Thank you for being here, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. We're super excited. Um, so we wanted to start off by just, you know, acknowledging that, John, like so much of your life is in the ocean and around nature. Um, so do you feel responsibility to play close attention um, to the environment in our oceans a little extra because of just how heavily your job relies on it? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's because my job relies on it. I'd say it's more just growing up here in Hawaii and being on the beach and in the ocean every day. I've just kind of have a love for it almost. And I love being in the ocean. I love being in clear blue water. And it's just awesome to see the sea life and things around the world. And so for me, it comes from more of like a loving standpoint of just loving being out there, loving spending time in it and doing all different types of things too. It's not just surfing. It's uh, diving and sailing and um, I think it's an amazing part of our world and and that's what kind of makes me want to protect it more. Yeah and you took a really cool trip to um, Palmyra which you documented in a YouTube series called Bella. Um, so could you tell us about some of the main takeaways regarding the environment and kind of just what you learned while you were out there? Yeah so going down to Palmyra on that trip was a dream for me because we got to go down and hang out with the scientists and kind of see all these studies they're doing there on the reef and the ecosystem around it on land and in the water and so it was the I think the most interesting thing that I came out of it with is that you know there's like a kind of a closed loop system and when you take a little piece of this loop out things kind of fall apart and it doesn't quite work and so a lot of places that they explained to us are just missing like one or two little pieces of this loop and you know if you can just kind of kind of help those pieces back into place nature can heal itself really well and and then the other thing is that um and I see it so much now that it was explained to me there was you know we a lot of humans <laughs> think of themselves separate from nature and we think of ourselves separate from kind of everything that's going on in the wild and um, if we could all think of ourselves as more a part of it, like we're a part of this whole system, then we would make a lot better decisions. And so those were kind of the bigger things I learned down there. And when you go down there and you see it and you see this whole system that has, you know, from being decimated by the army back in World War II and then to see what it looks like today. And, you know, they kind of just help these pieces go back into place and then you know, the coral reefs are healing quicker from bleaching events than any other coral reefs and just things like that. And you can see why you see how many birds there birds there are and the variety of fish there are in the water. And um, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see the difference between here in Hawaii, what I see kind of everyday surfing to see what you see there, the amount of coral that you see that's alive and just all these different little things that go into it. And so um, I guess yeah, when you hear those things and then you see it for yourself, you just kind of wholeheartedly believe in it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, what are some ways um, that people like anyone like we could or anyone watching this can take action to combat those you know, issues? It's such a hard thing. Um, and the, it, that was something I kept asking them when I was down there and they're all, you know, it, it, it can be anything from like, setting up you know and it's not to stop fishing but setting up fishing zones and things like that and everywhere is so different you know like for me it applies like my knowledge applies to here in Hawaii the most I guess and setting up these places like we have um, state parks that are set up for you know you can't do certain things out there you're only allowed a certain amount of people out there and to me that makes a lot of sense um, you close it off and you know we have a place called Kaina Point here and they've closed off the end of the point from all dogs and anything like that. You can't drive out there, but you can walk out there and see it. But all the 
seabirds have started coming back. And because of that, they closed it off out there from cars and all these different things. And so I think being in support of little things like that would really help that system come back. You know, having the seabirds come back, seabirds come back affects the whole system pretty big. And, and it in turn helps the reef and it helps all these different things. And so for me, I think helping to support those things, but also just inspiring people to get outside. Um, when people go outside and they kind of see it, and I feel like if people like would ha find that love for nature that I've found in my life or be inspired by that, they, they will find a way to help if they can. Yeah. And then staying within the realm of taking action and our ocean and saving it, um, is there one organization that supports the ocean that everybody watching this right now should go check out and take action with? Um, what would it be? And what does this organization do that you like? Um, I really like the Nature Conservancy and that's who kind of represents a big portion of Palmyra. And mm -hmm. I just like the work that they're doing down there and they do a lot of really cool things here in Hawaii as well. And so for me, the, the, Pal the Palmyra project is just interesting because it creates, um, and I, I think they even talked about it in our show, our little series, but it, it creates a baseline for the rest of the world to see like, hey, this is what it should look like. Because otherwise without that, it's really hard to find that baseline of like what the ecosystem should look like. Um, and so for me and my knowledge, which, might not be 100% 100% correct all the time, but that's just what I believe in at the moment. And um, so, yeah, I like I like the Nature Conservancy. Yeah, awesome. And um, so we also know that another one of your sustainable focuses is being an advocate for reducing plastic waste in the ocean. Um, so, what are ways that you achieve this, or I guess combat it in your everyday life? Yeah, the plastic waste thing is a big one. And I see that every day here in front of my house. It's just, there's plastic on the beach everywhere. And it's, it's pretty crazy how much there is. And so for me, I just do, I think little small steps, you know, it's like not taking a plastic straw at the at Starbucks. It's uh, drinking from a reusable bottle. That's really easy. And it's actually much cheaper than buying bottles of water every day. So just little things like that. I think if people could really take that into effect having reusable coffee cups even though you know you might get a coffee cup that's paper or whatever it is it's still creating more things and so if you're using the same coffee cup every day it just reduces the waste levels a lot we also heard that you keep honeybees in your garden which is so cool and in your farm too yeah. um, so we were wondering if you could tell us about the environmental impact of that and also how do you do that the bees have been really interesting to me. I got them a couple of years ago. We had, we got one hive here at our house and just from what I've seen, the impact that it's had has been incredible. So when I first moved in this house a long time ago, we planted a bunch of fruit trees and the fruit trees kept flowering and the flowers would fall off and nothing would happen. And um, I asked, someone at a nursery nearby and they were like well do you see a lot of bees around because I was asking what the problem was and it's like no I, I don't see a lot of bees around and this is before I had the bees and and then I, when I got the bees literally one month later that all the fruit trees flowered and um every fruit tree that we had was full of fruit like it was in, it was incredible and just to see that change happen so quickly just from the bees pollinating them um really showed me the effect that they have on the environment and they're such an interesting just little system that happens within that beehive you know and so learning about it as much as I can in the past two years has been a really fun project and getting the honey from it is really good yeah wow <laughs> that's so yeah that's fascinating and awesome um so yeah well thank you so much for meeting with us um it was so great to have you and as mentioned John sailed to Palmyra last year and documented all of it through his YouTube series, Vela. Um, so we found it super fascinating and learned a lot from watching it. So we recommend that you go watch that to learn so much about our ecosystems. Um, and so also try some of just the everyday sustainable methods that he mentioned and go check out the Nature Conservancy and see what ways you can get involved and take action. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. It was so- Thank awesome. you guys, this is awesome.